This is a Mazak Integrex 50 and it's a machine I trained a couple of guys on a few years back. A fairly old machine but I found these videos and I thought I'm going to share these because they could be uh, useful to someone. Um, it's an interesting machine in that it's got uh, um, the ability to have a live tool or a static tool and they go in these different heads and they're uh, they're disseminated by whether the rod tools are even numbers as to whether it's a static tool or a rotary tool and then this head that you can see here swivels to select whichever tool you want and you have like an extension to your T number that tells it whether you want a static tool or a rotary tool um, great machine, big machine um, it's a it's a T plus control, quite an old control, but still absolutely brilliant to program and really easy. So well thought out these machines were at the time and they're still, even today, um, they still uh, rate as some of the greatest, well in my opinion anyway, I think they're just very very easy to program and it was a brilliant control at the time. A few extra things on this machine that you uh, might need that uh, I found when I was uh, doing the training on this machine. These are the parameters that you need to change if you need to adjust your tool eye. And the best thing I found was to do a cut and measure on a tool. So don't use your tool eye, use the traditional way to set the tool. Or just machine until you've got an offset that you know is absolutely dead right. And then write this down or put it somewhere so that then as you're adjusting this arm you know what figure you want it to come up with when it measures it so then you can adjust it and as you adjust it it'll give you the right figure because you know what figure you're aiming for as opposed to just measuring and adjusting so you can see there these are the this is the parameters as listed in the book and then this is how it looks on the screen so you've got one for the top button which will be your X external diameters then that one lower button that'll be like your boring bars and things like that and the right hand one will be your Z measurements for all your tools the relationship between each tool in Z and then that back one is only important um, you can you can adjust that but if you've got a tool using the front and the back of the tool for some reason then that needs to be absolutely spot on so any tools that you measure from that one like a left hand tool, obviously that will make the difference if you don't adjust that. Um, it's probably the least important one, but obviously it's best to do them all. So you just adjust these parameters till you get it right. Uh, now another thing on this particular machine, it's a big machine, it's got a gearbox. Um, and there is a slight pitfall when you first turn the machine on that it won't have a gear. And it sits there in neutral laughing at you, so you have to pick up a gear but you'll see in this little short video there it just tells you how to do it but I just thought I'd add these extra little tips in here that uh, might be of use to you but with regards to the gearbox when it's in program it picks up the gears automatically anyway when it's in when using the Mazatrol okay thanks for watching my video I'm switch the spindle on now so you use the manual buttons spindle start and then put RPM on with that it actually won't run and what that is, is because it's got no gear range. Okay. And what you've got to do is go into MDI. Do I have to stop or not? Uh, yeah, yeah. Go into MDI and you type in, you've got three gears in on the side, 41, 42, and 43, and 44. So if you put in there now M41, and cycle so start that, You'll see what's the because the machine's gonna the, the chuck's gonna move because it's gonna it should engage that gear. So that's put that in gear, okay. If you now go into manual, when you press that to start the spindle, it'll now run. Okay. Now what it what it is is because it's got no gear.